and Brenda before. Um, thank you both for being here. I'm sure we'll have some other people pop in. It's a financial Friday, which I think has just been such a great program. I'm glad we, we've been um, doing this with the Cash Coalition, uh, Syracuse Empowerment, uh, Syracuse Financial Empowerment Center. Um, today, uh, Mary Margaret O'Hara is going to talk to us about COVID and your finances, how it impacts your finances. As usual, participants are welcome to use the chat room or the Facebook um, comments to submit questions or comments. Um, you are welcome to keep your video on so it's interactive and fun and you can um, take yourself off mute for questions if you really need to. Um, I will try and keep an eye on questions and ask them uh, if you put them in the chat. Um, there will definitely be time for questions at the end. I am going to put people on mute. Brenda, would you mind muting yourself for now just so we have um, less background noise? Oh, thank you. Um, but definitely, if you need something, give us a shout out. Um, there'll be questions at the end. I'm Andrea Wandersee. I'm the executive director of NIDA. Um, the Onondaga County Cash Coalition is a group of agencies, organizations that have come together to promote, um, well, I'll tell you what they promote in a minute. Here's the different organizations, uh, Syracuse Financial Empowerment Center, I won't read them all, um, but the United Way is a huge player in all of this. Um, and Nita's really uh, been happy to play a role with it. Um, CASH stands for Creating Assets, Savings, and Hope. Um, we're dedicated to promoting financial stability and asset building, opportunities for low and moderate income individuals and families in Onondaga County. And part of that, um, program is the VITA tax pro program, and I'm pretty sure there's a slide at the end to tell us about that. Am I right on that, Taisha? Um, so today we're going to talk about um, COVID and how it's impacting our finances. Mary Margaret O'Hara has worked for the city of Syracuse since 2015. She's the manager of two really important programs. She's the manager of the Financial Empowerment Center and the LED program. She loves talking to people about both of these initiatives uh, that make such a difference in the lives of our residents. Um, and she's also a Financial Empowerment Center or FEC client. Uh, she lives on the Southwest side of the city with her husband and her daughter and they, uh, they all speak Spanish at home, which I think is just really cool. So Mary Margaret, take it away and feel free to let me know if you want me to move a slide forward. Thanks so much, Andrea <clears throat> um, and Taisha for um, putting this together. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's such a wonderful asset in our community um, to be able to participate in these financial Fridays. Um, so as um, we've all been experiencing effects due to COVID um, for health reasons and just, you know, being pent up at home or um, however, it's affected our job. Um, it has really affected many people and their budgets, whether um, loss of income, um, maybe not being able to work due to um, illness. Um, but we also have um, today um, some of the important resources available um, as a result of um, COVID impacting our lives. So one of the important things um, that borrower, borrowers of student loans um, should know um, during COVID is that it, for federal loans, um, the suspension on interest in payment has been extended through September 30th, 2021. Um, what that means is for a federal borrower, um, you do not have to pay anything on your loan and you will not be penalized. Um, if you are in the public service loan forgiveness program, um, you will also have those months counted toward your 
overall PSLF um, payment term, which is great because even though you're not paying, um, the suspension isn't um, holding you back on your timeline for um, achieving uh, public service loan forgiveness. Um, many folks are wondering if they should pay down the principal anyway. Um, it is a great opportunity um, if you have loans and are not in the public service loan forgiveness program um, and are not eligible for that program um, to, to really see a difference in the principle of your loan if you can make payments. However, if you are enrolled in the public service loan forgiveness program, um, we advise that you, you do not make payments um, because as, as noted, um, those months that you will have um, on your suspension will actually be counted um, positively as if they were a payment toward your, um, toward your, toward your plan, even if you know, the payment is $0. Um, as for private loans, it's really important that you get in touch with your lender, that you actually know who your lender is. Um, I know that in some cases, folks are having a hard time tracking down um, who the lender is because it may have been um, given or sold to a new um, company. Um, if that's your case, I would highly recommend getting in touch with the Financial Empowerment Center, um, making an appointment um, with one of our counselors. Um, they can definitely help you track down who that is. Um, and if you don't want to do that, um, you can, um, pull your credit uh, report and, and you can find it um, on there. Um, but you should get in touch if you have private loans because there are many um, advantages of reaching out. Um, many of the private lenders, although um, they don't have suspensions like the, the federal loans, um, they may have an emergency forbearance plan. Um, and unfortunately, there are some scams out there um, and we all um, probably have been receiving phone calls on car warranties or our, um, but many folks also are called about um, their student loans if you're on a, a list of, lend, of borrowers. And um, two of the main um, ways that um, scammers are working right now, um, one is that they will um, help you qualify or help you see if you qualify for public service loan forgiveness. Um, that's not necessary. Um, you can do that on your own and um, you should never pay a fee um, for help um, with that. Um, there's also many people are taking advantage of um, people's vulnerabilities about their loans and saying that they will help them get them forgiven. Um, and that's also for a fee. Um, and that is also um, not something that's actually um, a valid um, thing that, that, that you can do. Um, so if any of that is happening to you, um, please just, um, you know, don't fall into the trap. Um, reach out to the um, Financial Empowerment Center if you'd like to make an appointment. Um, we will show you at the end um, how to do that, how to make an appointment. Um, and at this point, I, I'll ask Andrea to change, if there's, are there any questions? Um, and if there aren't, I can, um, Andrea, if you could change the, the slide, that would be great. Okay, so um, for many um, folks, the stimulus check, um, this long awaited um, extra 1400 um, to get to, um, will be the third round of the stimulus checks um, that will be sent out. Um, currently the Senate is debating um, on just the, you know, the final, final steps and final points in this bill, um, but it will likely, um, if it passes, um, start to be signed um, and, and ready. Um, it should be by the 14th of March. Um, we don't know how soon you will get your check, but um, it should be shortly after that. Um, and depending on your income, right now, folks um, that are in a, um, a, what your tax status is, if you're at a, um, 
if you're married filing jointly, if you earn less than 160,000, you will get the full amount. And if you are single um, filer, if you earn less than 80,000, you will get the full amount. Um, <clears throat> and um, because the um, stimulus check is based on um, the tax filing status, if you are having trouble um, getting your check or if you haven't received your check, um, it's really important to, um, to reach out um, to make sure that um, you have your um, taxes recorded properly. If you're not normally a filer, um, there is a, um, a filing status that you can do um, just to get the stimulus check. Um, so again, we encourage you to reach out to a Financial Empowerment Center counselor if you need help on that. Um, our counselors are ready to um, assist you um, in all of, all of your questions regarding the stimulus check. Very much. I have a question mm -hmm. and you might not know the answer. Sure. So if you have a dependent, who's not a child, mm -hmm. like a 21 year old, yeah. uh, who doesn't file their own taxes, mm -hmm. like he hasn't gotten any stimulus directly because he doesn't file taxes. Is that something you can go and request? Yeah, there, um, there was a lot of, um, yeah, I believe that um, this kind of iteration of the stimulus um, is going to make it easier for non-filers or dependents to receive um, their check. Um, I will follow up with you on that, Andrea. Maybe we can um, post a couple of the follow-up like links um, for um, for folks to um, you know for for this and um, also for the the student loan um, public service loan forgiveness um, page. We can we can post that as well. Hey, but great question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you at all, and I apologize about that. Um, so we we can do that with the VITA program. Um, yes, I've yes. Had, I've had four folks uh, to date who have come and have either not filed their taxes, and um, as because of that, uh, they didn't receive their stimulus check. Mm -hmm. um, I had um, some folks who... Um, um, you know, just had social security income, so they didn't file <clears throat> in the past. So you're able to file if you have no um, taxable income. Um, it's a very fast procedure. And um, it's something that if you make an appointment with the folks at the VITA, um, VITA tax preparation, they can take care of that right away. Um, you still do need the essential requirements, uh, which are your social security card and your photo ID. Um, but they can take care of that for sure. It's really fast and easy. And you're right, they do have services now that make that pretty easy to get your um, your, your stimulus check if you haven't yet. Yeah, Taisha, um, that's a really great point and excellent resource with VITA. Um, I know that it's by appointment only this time. Mm -hmm. Is there a link that, um, that you'd be able to share with us um, if sure. someone wanted to do that on their own? Sure, and I can find that. And the other way you can do that too is just through my free taxes. This software actually prompts you, um, have you received your stimulus check? No, and then it, and then it allows you just to go through the, the, like the procedures of adding your name, number, address, um, such, and um, just submitting and uh, they, you can take care of it. Um, I can put my free taxes in and then um, I can also put the number to make a VITA appointment too. So. That's awesome. I uh, you can do it right from my free taxes. That's that's so cool. Um, Taisha, um, for the my free taxes, um, is there an income limit um, to whom can use it? So the income limit for my free taxes is a little bit higher than the actual VITO appointment, and that's sixty six thousand dollars a year for my free taxes. Um, so if as as long as you're under that sixty six thousand dollars a year limit, um, you should be fine with getting your taxes prepared for free in its entirety. No tricky thing at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and is that for um, uh, single filers, the sixty six thousand, or is that for um, household, or is it just um, just overall the? Is there an is there an upper limit for a, like a married filing jointly status? 
Do, do you want to know what I haven't had anybody? <laughs> well, no, normally we ask folks, uh, we screen ahead in advance and I haven't had anybody over the $66,000 limit. So I don't actually know if it's uh, okay. both. So. All right, well, let's, we can add that to the list of um, resources we can find out. Thank you, Bo, that's a really good point. I'm so glad that you're here because um, I know how wonderful the um, the VITA program is and and I know how, you know, what a great job you guys are doing um, with the taxes. Um, but those appointments are filling up quick, aren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> We're full through the, like the second or third week in March right now. So yes, they're filling up really quick. Okay. And the way to make an appointment, the best way is to call 211, right? Exactly. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so 211 um, would be, it's such a great resource. Um, all right, um, do we wanna move on to the next slide? Okay, so, um, you know, in our community, um, we're, we're really, um, excited that there is housing assistance for folks that have experienced a COVID hardship. Um, so COVID hardship um, would mean that, like let's say your hours were cut, um, cut back, or you were furloughed for a while, um, or you lost your job, or um, maybe your place of business or where you normally work is temporarily closed. Um, so if you are struggling um, to pay your um, your rent um, or some or even some utility bills um, if you need help with a security deposit um, there are um, uh, it's in it's not a loan it, it is a it is a grant um, it will um, cover um, those expenses um, if you can you can prove the COVID hardship um, you can call the Department of Social Services, 315-435-2700. Um, and select the prompt for rental assistance. Um, you do need to show your proof of income. So proof of income could be anything, um, whether it's your um, pay stubs, um, whether it's social security, um, any, any household income. So social security, pay stubs, um, uh, pension, um, <clears throat> anything that you have um, for your for your income, um, and then the proof that um, you've gone through a hardship um, due to COVID nineteen. So whether it was because you were sick or your place of business had to cut back on hours, or or maybe you were laid off, um, there is help out there for you um, for your housing. Um, and the same is true of um, the eviction moratorium, um, which is extended through May of 2021. Um, your landlord cannot evict you um, because if, if you have a COVID hardship and you are having trouble making payments, um, they can still evict for other reasons due to um, health or um, not health, um, due to the, the state of possibly the, um, the if, if you're in violation of your, of your contract, um, but are not under a COVID hardship. So there aren't protections for you um, if it's, you know, if, if you are in violation um, and you don't have a COVID hardship. Um, so for health hazards or um, safety hazards. Um, right, so, um, I would also highly suggest um, making an appointment with the Financial Empowerment Center um, if you are experiencing um, a COVID hardship. Um, we have great resources for you um, to connect you um, in the community to all of the help that's out there. Can um, I interrupt for a minute, Mary Margaret? Of course, Andrea. Yeah, so we, we are finding people who are um, still being threatened with eviction. And if you feel that you are being threatened with an illegal eviction, um, we'd like you to go ahead and call, you can call NIDA. You can call, go to www.nehda.org uh, um, and uh, visit our housing services website. You can um, 
uh, email Taisha. She's our, our housing director um, and her, her email's on our contact page. You can also go to um, Onondaga Volunteer Lawyers Project and Taisha just put the website in the chat, but it's onvlp.org. Um, if you think you need legal services, um, because there are um, some bad actors out there. Mm -hmm. um, there are some instances where um, evictions are happening, happening legitimately, but you wanna talk to a lawyer um, and find out what that situation really is. Um, and if you're not quite sure what to do, go ahead and connect with NEDA, NEHDA.org. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea, and thanks for including the links, Taisha. <clears throat> um, can we move on to the next slide? Andrea? Okay, so um, we've got some links here to a couple of um, pages that are um, super helpful. Um, I've mentioned a few times the Syracuse Financial Empowerment Center. Um, I'm a big believer in the financial empowerment service that um, is free and provided um, by professional counselors um, to all residents of um, Syracuse and Onondaga County. Um, so um, we, um, it, <coughs> Andrew, would you um, click on the link, please? Thank you, you too. Um, <clears throat> Can you see that? Um, it didn't show up yet. Um, how's that? Awesome. Yep. So if we go to SyracuseFEC.org, um, the we've got some um, interesting kind of tabs up here for resources. Um, some of it has actually no job information, um, <clears throat> but um, but the the really key thing here is um, yep. So we've got some of our um, um, loss of employment, economic impact, stimulus checks, assistance with bills and loans, um, for filing taxes, um, some consumer protection from fraud. Um, and then legal aid phone numbers in our um, community. Um, and <clears throat> the key thing is the make an appointment button. So Andrew, could you click there, please? Thank you. Um, that takes us to a, a little form um, where there's an, a red asterisk. It's it's required, you know, to fill out your name, your, um, uh, thank you, Andrea. Um, your email, phone number, zip code, um, you know, <clears throat> how you'd like to um, be contacted. Um, so, and, and if you could just fill in a little thing about why you're contacting us, um, you could just say, um, you know, <laughs> I want to work on a, um, you know, um, a budget or um, I just graduated um, from college and I need help. Um, you know, coming up with a, a plan to pay loans. I, yep, I want to buy a house. Um, I want to buy a car. I, I want to get a job. I need a bank account. Um, I just turned 18. Um, I'm, I'm, I've just retired um, for retirees. Um, you know, um, thank you, Andrew. This is awesome. Um, I want to go on vacation. I think that's a that's a great one. Um, I do too. And <laughs> but you you know you got to save up for that. So um, yeah, there's um, everyone's got a reason. Um, everyone's got goals, and um, your financial empowerment center will help you achieve those goals. And um, it's a it's a great journey um, with your with your counselor um, along the way. Um, can't say enough about the financial empowerment center. Um, so make an appointment today. Um, you will not regret it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, if you, where it says upload files or drop files, um, you don't have to do that. Um, if you, you know, 
um, have time and um, if you can do it ahead of your session, it's super helpful. Um, if you can't do it ahead of your session, that's okay. Um, we, we still wanna see you, we still want you to come in um, and we'll help you through um, what we need um, to, you know, to have a successful um, outcome for you. Um, so yeah, so you just kind of um, can put down um, where you heard about us. Um, maybe it was a friend or um, maybe it was a financial Friday. Um, <laughs> maybe it was Nita. Um, but yeah, there's, um, there's a, and, and we have, we can, we can do appointments in any language. So even if it's, um, we have one, we have two counselors that are um, Spanish speakers um, and can do it, um, you know, in Spanish. But um, we also have um, the ability to have live interpreters um, in the session, which is so wonderful. Um, we have um, this resource called Language Line, and we can call in and get a live interpreter in minutes into the session. So. Um, so it's great, any language, any language. Um, and we are um, currently only conducting appointments um, remotely. So whether it's Zoom or um, a Google Meet or um, over the phone or even by email, um, you know, we, that's how we're, we're doing things um, until, well, until we can all get back to um, a post-COVID world. <laughs> and I'm not going to hit submit because I'm already a client. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. Um, Andrea, what, what's been, um, what, for me, one of the, the things that my counselor helped me with was my student loans and, um, saving, um, putting, getting my credit score up and, and then, um, buying a home. So um, I've had a lot of huge outcomes with my um, financial empowerment center counselor. And I'm, that's why I just love it. So. I think the biggest thing, so I worked with Kesmir Pistrek, who is based out of our office. And um, I was working on some goals on my own anyways. Um, but one of the things is I always wanted to get that safety savings account. And I've never been successful with that. And because I was always trying to save more than I actually could. And then I couldn't do it. And then I dip into it. And by the time you start dipping in, then you just dip in. And she's like, why don't you save just a little bit less each paycheck and then actually save it? Uh -huh. And it was such great advice. Um, and then the other thing I did was um, I actually put my savings to go directly to a different credit union than my regular credit union. And I don't have a check Book. I don't have a debit card. I, don't, I have to go into the credit union to get the money. And so that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I've got almost $1,500 that oh, I've yeah. paid. And so for the first time in my life, literally today, it was the first time ever I didn't dip into my overdraft during a pay period. Wow. <laughs> I don't have any credit card debt right now. And I have this money it a credit union that I have to drive to if I want to get into it. So <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it, you know, what I really love is the counselors will meet you where you're at, right? So it doesn't matter how sophisticated you think you are. It doesn't matter what your situation is. Everybody's got financial challenges, right? And the first time I talked to Tom Delwell, who's one of the counselors, this was before the Empowerment Center started. One day where we're talking, I just dumped on him. I said, I bet you don't hear this kind of garbage. He's like, Andrea, I hear this from people all the time. He's like, and everybody's story is a little bit different, but everybody has issues. Is it medical debt? Is it student loan debt? Is it what, what is your, you know, did something happen? Did your vet bills get out? Two trips to the emergency room with your dog. I mean, your whole life gets turned upside down. And whatever it is, and whatever your situation is, everybody's got something. And so come to the Financial Empowerment Center for free. Yeah. Have trained people help you analyze where you're at, help you articulate your goals, and help you set up a plan that works. I think it's amazing. 
Yeah, I do too. That's awesome. You're a good spokesperson. And I've got a mop to sell you too. I'm sorry. I'm not like a salesperson. <laughs> You're a great salesperson. <laughs> I try. That's great. Um, awesome. And Andrew, could we click on a few other of the links? Um, if we go up and actually, if you, if you want, you could type in um, um, seergov.net forward slash lead, L-E-A-D. So another, um, this isn't COVID related, but, um, but actually um, <laughs> as many um, people's resources have been um, hit by um, COVID, um, many people have um, lost income um, and many people are staying at home and, and doing more things in their home. Um, and it's so important to have a safe, um, safe and healthy home um, to live in, um, that um, we have a HUD grant from the Housing and Urban Development Agency um, to offer eligible homeowners and tenants um, a grant to fix any lead hazards in their home. Um, so it's a really great resource. Um, it's really so important for our community, for, for especially for housing where children reside um, or visit frequently um, to be safe um, from lead because lead paint, um, lead based paint, um, the dust from lead based paint um, causes so many terrible outcomes um, that are lifelong. Um, whether it's a drop in IQ level, um, whether it's um, other neurological um, or emotional um, issues, but but lead is a, a problem that um, if you are exposed and um, you could have lifelong consequences. So we truly need to um, get the information out there that um, you can receive a grant um, to have work done to make your home lead safe. Um, and on this page at the bottom, there is a link to our application. Um, so I would highly recommend, um, you know, checking to see if you're eligible um, to have your home um, made lead safe. Um, and then, Andrea, um, there is a link on the PowerPoint to some of the food resources. Sure. Um, sure. Can we just reinforce that the lead program is not just for homeowners? And if you uh, qualify, if you're a tenant and you income qualify, that your landlord might be able to qualify for the program. I just think that's an important piece to get out there. Um, sorry. Yes, definitely. Um, and the criteria for eligibility um, is living in a home that was built before 1978. And um, over 95% of our housing in Syracuse um, is eligible because we have older homes. Um, the other one is that a child under age six needs to either live at the property or spend time at the property. So if you are, let's say, um, let's say you're an, um, an aunt and you have no children, but you have your little um, nieces and nephews that come over, um, you know, to play at your house, um, you can apply. Um, if you are, um, you know, um, a grandmother, a grandfather, um, you know, if you're a babysitter, um, you may be eligible for this, um, even if you don't have a child living at your property. Um, but certainly for homes um, with children living there under age six um, and an older home, um, see if you're eligible from the income requirements. So that's based on HUD's um, income guidelines and it's on the application checklist. So you can, you can see that by visiting the application. Yeah, so if we click on the Onondaga County, um, we really have some um, amazing resources in our community for um, 
for food pantries and um, you know the um, giveaways that are happening um, through the food bank. Um, so I recommend definitely um, seeking out um, if you do need um, if you are food you know insecure um, one of these <clears throat> pantries or um, places. And 211 is always a place to go look for these as well. Absolutely. And you could tell them where you live and they could tell you what the closest place is and the hours. Um, absolutely. And then it, it is important to know that, um, you know, there has been an increase in SNAP benefits, a 15% increase, um, and um, which will go through June 2021. Um, so, you know, for folks that maybe have had a, a hit to their budget, um, and would like to um, see if they're eligible um, for SNAP benefits, um, it would be really important to call um, the Department of Social Services and Economic Security. Um, that's the same number we have under the housing assistance in the slide for housing assistance. Great. That's quite a list here. Yeah, yeah. I We just have so many wonderful resources in our community. Yeah. For, um, and I think generally speaking, sometimes people don't realize how many resources we have and sometimes 211 is a little tough to navigate. So I think, you know, getting on the phone with somebody, exploring their website a little bit, calling a place like NIDA where we can help you figure out some of that. Um, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming and that's why, that's why we're around. Yeah, yes, I, I love the fact that Nita can really assist on so many different things. All, all of these things that are um, COVID related, food, housing, lead, um, getting, helping people with the application. Um, it's really such a great resource. Taxes. Taxes. <laughs> it is tax time. Can I, can I crash your, your presentation for one moment? Yeah. yeah. Um, so starting next week, and um, this is this is a little bit uh, premature a bit, but um, Home Headquarters has their amazing SHARP program, um, and it's just about to roll out. Um, the details are going to be available next week, um, but NIDA processes applications for Northside um, homeowners. Uh, it's $1,500 grant to do an exterior project or electrical or heat. Um, Taisha, feel free to jump in if I'm wrong on something. Uh, You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> there's a small investment up front. You need, to, you need to be able to pay up to 10% of the project with a max at $100. And there's some paperwork and we help you with the paperwork. This grant goes so fast. It goes so fast. So if you know a homeowner who might want to do a project this year and they haven't applied in the past three years, please have them email Nita. You can email Tysha, T-Y-S-H-A at nehda.org and get on our wait list and we will send the materials out. Um, or you can visit our website and give us a call and um, ask some questions. But um, once the once the applications are available, we send them out, and for about two or three weeks, that's all we do, besides taxes and house support and business support. But <laughs> uh, besides everything else, and um, but we would love to get people on the wait list if you know of homeowners who are interested. So, um, and home headquarters website is also a great resource, and and they accept applications as well. Awesome! That is so good to hear. The Sharp Grant is just a wonderful resource in our community. It's, it's yeah, so sorry, I just couldn't resist because it's- No, like absolutely, <laughs> that's so important. Yeah, another kind of you know positive resource to take care of your home mm -hmm. um, as you've been spending so much time at home. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> I think the, the rest of our, um, talk today. Um, I think we're just about wrapping up. Um, as Taisha mentioned earlier, um, you know, about tax season um, and VITA, um, make your appointment. Um, if your income is under 57,000, 
you can get your taxes done for free. And it's not just, you know, done by the people that are preparing your taxes and doing your taxes for free know what they're doing. Um, they will, you know, work to get you the best outcome for your taxes. And you don't have to have any of that go to any companies or any of the tax other tax preparer bigwigs in our, um, you know, in your neighborhood that pops up every so often, every time this year from January to June or so. Um, you don't have to go there. Um, just call 211, make an appointment um, to get your taxes done with VITA. Um, and it's they make it really easy this year. It's a drop off. Um, so you're gonna drop off your paperwork, um, which is great. Um, so all your, um, your W-2s or your, um, any of the, the um, paperwork you've received for your taxes. Taisha, do people have to drop off their license or just a copy of it? Or how does, how does that work? Just show oh, it. Yeah, so Nita, it works just a little bit different than Peace. We actually have about a 15 minute interview process where mm -hmm. we fill out some paperwork, ask them any questions that um, aren't clear on their paperwork. And um, we make a copy of their license and, and social security card. And what we do is when they pick it up in the afternoon, we return any copies that we had of their personal or identification information. Great. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely need your social security number card, your actual <laughs> card, or we send you home. <laughs> so it, that happened to me once. I, I couldn't find my social security card. And um, I, I don't know if this is still happening, but um, it was really easy to get um, a new one um, at, you know, Social Security at the federal building, but I don't know what they're doing now um, with COVID. So um, let's see if we can find a phone number um, for folks that might not have their Social Security card. Let me see if I can. Well, she's looking that up. Does anyone have any questions? You can either type in the chat or unmute yourself. I'd like to say something. Go ahead. Um, some people who may be watching this might think that some of these services are not what they're looking for. They need specific help in a certain area. But bear in mind that the food pantry or some of these other things can save you some money that you can use to apply to the problem or issue that is really facing you. So you're reallocating resources by using some of these additional things. So that repair that you're gonna to try to do with Sharp or whatever, that money may be able to allow you to stay in the hole. Or, you know, there's just, you gotta look at it a different way. You may have came out to find out about student loan or about eviction or whatever, but if you don't have to spend that money at the grocery store, that can help you in other ways, even if it's helping you rent a truck when it's time to go, you know? So we just have to look at it in more than one way. That's all I have. That's a great point, Brenda. And I think that is one of the things the financial empowerment staff can help people think through and work through like what's fungible, what can I move? What, if I, if I, if my goal is this, what's the best way to achieve that goal? And of course that is a little bit different um, for everybody. So um, that's, a, that's a great reminder that there's um, more than one way to solve a problem. And sometimes having someone talk that through with you, um, especially someone who is helping people solve these problems regularly, right? And is trained to do this is really, really great. Thank you, Brenda. What a great, um, yeah, I'm well said. Yep, you can reallocate your resources by using the ones that are available. Um, yeah, totally, great. Thanks. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So I've got the last slide here on Vita Tax Prep. Taisha, did you want to add any more onto the tax prep for us? 
Uh, no, I thought that was a great segue with the um, the stimulus item too. That kind of came up late in the game, Mary Margaret. Um, somebody had called and asked, um, I didn't get my stimulus payment. Can I, can you help me? And I said, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, sure enough, uh, we were able to. And so as people call with that problem, we've, um, we've helped them and um, actually put them on days that were typically not scheduled because it, it takes 20 minutes. It's the fastest thing ever. It's literally, I didn't get my check. Okay, here's one. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, if folks need help with that, um, definitely let them know. And outside of that, I think we did a great job with uh, talking about VDA programs. Um, yeah. Sorry. Oh wait, the only thing I did wanna say about VIDA is uh, the SU um, um, site opened up and what SU does is they, um, they, they walk you through the My Free Tax Service. So if you're at home and you're absolutely like, don't wanna leave the house, but you need help getting your taxes prepared, you can make an appointment with a SU um, advisor. I'm not quite sure what they're called. Uh, and uh, they can walk you through the process at home. So um, uh, there should be some information on that when you call 211. Um, so that's great too. That's awesome. I didn't know that they had that service too. That's so great. Kelsey just got it. <laughs> she had like all this like legal stuff she had to get through at SU and she finally got it. So she's really excited too. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Mary Margaret, thank you for bringing all of this together. Uh, I think this was a great topic and a way to touch on a lot of different issues that people are worried about right now. Um, so I appreciate your time and your expertise um, and all of the work you do for the community. Um, Taisha Martin is our Director of Housing and Property Development, but she does oh so much more. She's been integral to the Financial Fridays. If you have questions, um, follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me or Taisha. Our emails are in the chat. I'm Andrea at nita.org. She's Taisha at nita.org. We'll follow up. The other thing is, um, Sean, I see you have a question. Hang on, we got a question. You can unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself? Well, um, I'll hang on with you, Sean. So if, yes, if you if, I did, I did. Oh, great. Hello. great. Hi, what you got? Um, so in a in a one, two sentence, could you tell me what Nita is all about, please? Oh, sure, absolutely. Thanks for asking. We're the Northeast Holly Development um, Association, and we provide housing uh, support, small business support, and community development work on the north side of Syracuse. Uh, we serve 10 census tracts from Burnett all the way up to Hiawatha, from um, sort of state and Salina over to Teal. Um, honestly, we'll work with a lot of people in the city, but we do a variety of programs. Right now, we're really focused on working with um, tenants who have housing issues. Um, we've just hired a new small small business support person named Dallas Brayson. Um, and then we provide a lot of other sort of wraparound community services um, and work with different neighbor groups. Um, we do a lot of partnerships with home headquarters like on the SHARP grant and their home ownership program. And we work with the land bank as well. Did I miss anything, Taisha? I think you got it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Does that help, John? Uh, yes. Can I have a quick follow-up, please? Of course. Um, so if I own a house in that district on the north side, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned tenants, and this you also help home, homeowners, correct? Mm -hmm. um, in order to get assistance, any type of assistance, any type of help from Nita, do I have to have a, a income coming in on a consistent basis or income period? No. Yeah. Okay, is it specific help if I don't have no, no income? Say that my house was no. inherited. I inherited my house and I don't have any, I don't have a job, mm -hmm. um, but I inherited the house and I have no income at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm in dire straits of, of fixing 
of getting my um, house fixed with lead or the windows, I mean, roof and everything. Um, what, what, what should I do? So uh, first, go ahead, Taisha, you go ahead. Uh, Sean, first, you should definitely reach out to us. There are a lot of services that you apply for, um, this, you know, despite the fact that you don't have income. Um, a lot of them are um, in, um, household uh, income based. Um, so um, most of them would be work well with you. Um, it, you did seem to mention a few. So if you want to reach out to me, please send me, give me an email or um, uh, I'll give you my phone number and give me a call and we can talk in more detail for sure. I'd be happy to help, help you, Sean. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All righty. Um, so we, the last thing is we're doing a monthly session. And Taisha, do we have a topic for next month yet or are we still working on that? You know what, the, um, the topic um, is tentatively a discussion with home headquarters about some of the uh, housing funding that's available through them with their grants and such. So a nice follow-up on um, SHARP, um, lead pro, uh, sorry, Mary Margaret, you might help me with this one, with their, mm -hmm. um, so it would be SHARP, their elder um, uh, grants. Um, they had, they did have a COVID grant. They have a number of different grants that are available to folks um, that are housing related. And we were hoping to have them speak with us next month. And um, that's what we're looking at so far. That's excellent. Um, if anyone is sitting here thinking, gosh, I wish they'd do a seminar on mm -hmm. X, Y, or Z, feel free to email that to either Taisha or me. We can't guarantee it, but we'd certainly love to hear what's on your mind and what's of concern to you. Um, it will certainly just help us serve you better. So um, I wanna thank everyone for taking time to be here today especially thank Mary Margaret and um, again, Taisha for all your hard work. We will be here a month from now. And in the meantime, feel free to reach out to Nita if you need anything. If we can't do it for you, we'll try and connect you to someone who can. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Taisha. So Go enjoy much. this beautiful sunny day. Great job. Thank you.